Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the course Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions. Today we are going to start the next module that is module 3. The name of this module is Thermodynamic Property Relations. In this module, we will cover 5 lectures. The first one would be the thermodynamic functions and Maxwell equations. Second one is property relations for phase change process. Third lecture would be property relations for single phase systems. Then we have heat capacity equations and applications. Then in the last lecture we will discuss about Joule's Thomson coefficient and how this uh, parameter is very vital in cons while consideration of uh, liquefaction of gases. So, in this lecture number 10 in this series and lecture number 1 for this module, we are going to start the uh, lecture thermodynamic functions and Max Maxwell's equations. So, basically this module deals with the fundamental concepts of uh, mathematics and how you are going to make use of those mathematical concepts into thermodynamic uh, property evaluations. So, in this lecture uh, we are going to discuss some important concept of mathematics and these mathematic concepts uh, is going to be utilized to derive various thermodynamic parameters and those parameters we call uh, as thermodynamic functions and many property relations they can be closely related to each other. So, before we start first thing that we are going to discuss is that mathematical formulation of properties. The main significance is that why do we require the formulation of mathematical properties. Please recall that during UG courses you must be aware of properties of pure substance where we discussed the uh, different states of matter, solid, liquid, gas and those states of matter are represented in a PVT surface, pressure, volume and temperature sur surface. Now, on any of the surface either it is pressure volume or temperature volume or pressure temperatures. So, the we the, the one way to represent the state of the system is graphical representations by drawing either constant pressure line, constant volume line, constant entropy line all these things. So, uh, but the very basic fact that remains is that how did you we arrive at these lines. So, there are some mathematical treatment to it and we will try to recall some fundamental concepts of uh, partial differential equations and we will try to use those equations in this uh, per, um, uh, thermodynamic analysis. So, that we can build a, a uh, foundation with respect to mathematical formulation of thermodynamic properties. So, with this background let me start that the application of thermodynamic principle engineering uh, systems require the property data and in fact, we have introduced a uh, specific in, uh, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, but these are actually derived properties. And, but your our measured parameters that are mainly pressure, temperature, specific volume or density. So, the main intention or main learning objectives for uh, this lecture would be to form some mathematical expressions that will allow the specific, specific properties to be evaluated from the experimental data. By experimental data we mean the property that we are going to measure during the experiments and they are mainly pressure, temperature, specific volume and mass and these are for uh, 
simple compressible systems. In fact, just to remind you we normally do not measure internal energy, but we calculate internal energy from measured data. So, this is the basic uh, fundamentals behind this derived properties. So, now in order to uh, define or fix the state of the systems in thermodynamic coordinates for a simple uh, compressible systems, we need two independent intensity properties uh, and uh, they can be expressed in two uh, by any other independent properties. So, you have if you say that we have pressure temperature specific volume, so our choice would be pressure can be expressed at a fun, uh, function of volume and temperatures and volume can be expressed as a pressure and temperature and like this. So, this is one way we look at the properties. Other way to look at this in addition to this we can also express some characteristics functions. In fact, these characteristics functions we are going to introduce uh, in this module and two important functions are mainly Femmel's function and Gibbs function. So, we will discuss the significance of these functions towards the later part of this course, but however, uh, this function when I define we typically say that they are similar to uh, other thermodynamic functions like pressure parameters, pressure, temperature or we can uh, correlate with the thermodynamic properties. So, in all the main summary is that first thing we talked about the parameters pressure, temperature, specific volume they can be re uh, related and one can write any thermodynamic properties as a function of other two. So, for example, pressure can be function of temperature volume, internal energy can be function of uh, temperature volume, enthalpy also can be function of temperature and pressure, we can write entropy can be represented as a temperature or pressure, even many other things derived properties can be written in this fashion. Apart from this, two important characteristics functions we introduce, one is Helmholtz function xi, other is Gibbs function g. Typically, the xi is function of volume and temperature and g is a function of pressure and temperature. So, having said this, I will just give some uh, the need of uh, thermodynamic properties, why we require mathematical formulations. So, if I just uh, if you just revisit one uh, particular diagram like uh, representing the properties of pure substance in a pressure volume diagrams, we can say that this is the dome we are talking about and within, within this dome we can say one some region which are liquid other is vapor region. And when you are going along this, the pressure increases and these are constant temperature lines on a pressure volume diagrams. So, why we say that constant, these are constant temperature lines? Because uh, uh, one thing is that with change in the volume, pressure also changes, but at constant temperatures. Now, uh, if you look the dome, within the dome we have liquid vapor phase, where we can say pressure is pressure as well as temperature always remains constant. That means, P is saturated press saturated pressure is a function of temperature only and vice versa. So, main significance of this is that the way of representing the parameters in mathematical form, we say either d p by d v and uh, this either it can be less than 0 or it can be greater than 0 or it can be equal to 0. So, this is possible to in this way it is possible to represent these lines, but these lines are uh, nothing but the derivation of uh, mathematical formulations. So, our main target is that uh, how we how we, we derive this kind of relations mathematically. 
Another significant fact is that when you talk about the critical point, the slope is dp by dv at constant temperature is 0 and uh, beyond this line and uh, um, these lines it is always less than 0 because we are we are in the um, because we are in the uh, single phase zone and at the same time uh, we can say these are the isotherm lines that are drawn here now again another significance would be if you recall the pressure temperature plane or we we call this as a phase diagram similar points can be represented now on a pressure temperature plane we can represent a triple point and the critical point and one can draw that line and this line is not exactly a straight line but what we can say it's a constant specific volume line on a pressure temperature diagram and this constant specific volume line is nothing but your v is equal to vc that is critical volume so this is the critical volume line and any volume which is less than the critical volume which any volume which is higher than the critical volumes and also we can have the isometric lines which is nothing but the change of pressure or temperature under the constant the conditions of constant volumes so this also can be represented now while deriving them in a partial differential form other way of looking at in in some uh, situations like for example when you join this line uh, this triple point to this critical point the in this spot line the partial differential equation because this is a phase change process and during the phase change process uh, this is now a function ordinary partial differential equations becomes uh, ordinary differential equation so this is nothing but the locus of all saturation states so uh, this is the way or background why we require the formulation of mathematical formulation of thermodynamic properties now we will uh, uh, go back one by one so first important relations that we are going to derive is the maxwell relations or we simply we call this as a maxwell equations so the very basic fundamental things that we need to understand um, while considering the maxwell equation is that we must recall the um, uh, fundamentals of exact differential for example if you say that any function any parameter if z is a function of x and y where x and y are independent in nature so we can write the exact differential of z is dz that is equal to dou z by dou x at constant y into dx plus dou z by dou y at constant x into dy so typically if you put this parameter as m and this parameter as n and now the it has been proved that for uh, this mathematical function the function will be exact means uh, the exactness of a function will be justified when the dou m by dou y at constant x is equal to dou n by dou x at constant y when this is satisfied so with this very basic background let us recall that what uh, equations we have studied so the first one we have studied is tds equations and these tds equations are derived from the combined uh, equations of first law and second law one equation is du is equal to tds minus pdv other equation is dh is equal to tds plus pdp now apart from this we will now introduce another function what we call as specific Helmholtz functions and specific Gibbs functions. We will discuss the significance of these functions towards the latter part of the course, but for the, however, for the sake of um, uh, mathematical importance, uh, if you can just rewrite this equation that one functions can also be formed from u t s. So, we say xi is a nothing but u minus ts 
another function Gibbs function we define it as u is equal to h minus T s. Then from this we can write this uh, uh, you can find d z is equal to d u minus T d s minus s d t. Now, from this T d s equations the first T d s equations this can be utilized here. So, uh, this function uh, d z now can be expressed at is equal to minus p d p minus s d t. Now, in similar way for Gibbs functions if you start g is equal to h minus t s. So, we have d g that is equal to d h minus uh, d t d s minus s d t just by differentiations. Then we get this d h from this uh, other equations put it here then we get d g is equal to v d p minus s d t. So, we have now uh, basically 4 equations 2 t d s equations uh, one uh, is Humboldt's function other is Gibbs functions. So, if you summarize that equations, so you can write the first expression d u is equal to t d s minus p d v. Now, here if you recall this particular equations and our mathematical expression this we can find out the m n that is m is equal to t n is equal to p minus p x is equal to s and y is equal to v. Now, if this exact condition is to be satisfied we can find out the relations dou t by dou v at constant s is equal to minus dou p by dou s at constant v. Again from the uh, second T d s equations d h is equal to T d s plus v d p similar analogy can be followed. So, you can find out d t by dou p dou t by dou p at constant s is equal to dou v by dou s at constant p. Third equation from d z is equal to minus p d p minus s d t similar analogy is followed we can write the d p by d t dou p by dou t at constant v is equal to dou s by dou v at constant t. Then uh, if you have the last one which is d g is equal to v d p minus s d t then we can get dou v by dou t at constant p is equal to minus dou s by dou p at constant dou s by dou p at constant t. Okay. Now, these four relations we call this as a Maxwell equations. So, uh, or Maxwell relations. Now, question remains that how to remember this Maxwell equations. So, to do that first thing that we have to remember is what is called as V z t V u s diagram. So, you know uh, we know that V is specific volume, child G is Humboldt function and uh, uh, U is internal energy and S is this. Now, what does this means? First thing we have to draw a square. So, square when you start with we start with V first then uh, Z then T. So, one line you can represent as V Z T and which means that j is a function of v and t. So, the first expression we write as j is equal to function of t and v okay. and other one is v u s. So, when you when I put this v t line first then also I can put v and s here and this is related with function u. Okay. And when I have this triangle uh, the rest of the parameters will be opposite for, for from V will have P opposite from T will have S and this P and H S will have relation um, function that can be formed with enthalpy and from T and P function can be formed that is Z. So, basically, basically by drawing this diagram uh, we can say that what will be the coordinates of this or points uh, or we can say I can name this uh, square as V T P S diagram V P T V T P S uh, which is square and 
the lines or length of the lines I can I can put in this way as xi, z, h and u. So, which one will be xi, which one will be g that is decided by when you say when you remember v xi t and v u s. So, I have already told that how this xi is related to this. So, when I say xi is a function of t and v, so we can write the first equations and of course, since the t and v are in the bracket, so corresponding differential will be dv and dt and when I write this, so if I say they must come from v, so that means one you can see this arrow is entering into v, so, so when it is entering, so there is a negative sign here. So, we will have minus p and this arrow is entering into t, so it is minus s. So, positive and negative, negative so in both the cases it is entering into v and t, so it is minus. Let, let us say another situations or in the opposite side of this xi, we have h here, where both the arrows are coming out and here we start this enthalpy, which is a function of s and p. So, when I write this, so differential will be ds and dp and we and here both the arrows is coming out of p and s. So, so accordingly both t and v, v and t will be positive. In other situation one positive other negative, let us see in this line that is v s line, the function is u. So, u is a function of uh, v and s. So, you can write du is equal to uh, T d s minus P d v. So, here we will have d s, we will have d v. Now, d s uh, will uh, from s we are going out of this towards t. So, it will be t. So, and this is positive because it is come going out and in this case, but in this case uh, if you say v the arrow that goes is entering into v. So, it is minus p and once we know this we can derive this. Uh, uh, corresponding functions. So, basically by remembering this uh, diagram, we can write uh, promptly write the uh, equations. Uh, so, in summary what we have is we have basic properties pressure, volume, temperature and entropy and these are nothing but the cardinal points of the square and the characteristics functions are uh, internal energy enthalpy, Gibbs uh, Humboldt functions and Gibbs functions. They are represented as the lines and this is nothing but a numic device for expressing differential form of thermodynamic potential and this is the easy way that how one can write this Maxwell relations. Here all four relations, the differential, partial differential relations are known as the Maxwell equations. Now, let us revisit or go a little bit further the where we are going to discuss the uh, um, exact differential which can be extended uh, to obtain certain other mathematical expressions. So, if you recall one of the basic relations for uh, while deriving the mathematical uh, Maxwell equation is u is equal to function of s and v we can write du, uh, uh, we can write it this as an a, a, a exact differential and we can compare with the first TDS equation TDS minus PDV. So, from these equations we can find one expression that is temperature is equal to du dou u by dou s at constant v and pressure P is equal to minus dou u by dou v at constant s. Another relation is the where enthalpy is a function of entropy and pressures, we can find exact differential for enthalpy. We can recall the uh, TDS equations dH and from these two equations by comparing we can say temperature T is equal to dou H by dou S at constant P and specific volume will be dou H by dou P at constant S. The next equation will be Humboldt, uh, Humboldt's function xi is equal to function of temperature and volume. So, we can find exact differential d xi and uh, we can by definition also we can write d xi is equal to minus p d b minus s d t. 
So, from these two equations we can say uh, the uh, minus p is equal to dou z by dou v at constant t and minus a is equal to s is equal to dou z by dou t at constant v. And the last one is from Gibbs functions which is a g is a function of temperature and pressure. We can find out this as d g and uh, then Gibbs function by definition we can write and then from this we can get another relation specific volume is equal to dou g by dou p at constant t and minus is equal to dou g by dou t at constant p. So, we have uh, Maxwell equations, next we have basic relations. Now, we will go a little bit further uh, from this last previous analysis, uh, uh, we have 4 Maxwell equations and we have um, 8 uh, uh, basic relations and from those when I say uh, um, T from those from the from the previous slide we have we have find out temperature uh, expressions uh, that is one is in a, with respect to enthalpy as entropy at constant volume other is enthalpy and entropy at constant pressure. So, from this we can find out another relation du by d s at constant v is equal to dou h by dou s at constant p. Other relations are dou u by dou v at constant s is equal to dou z by dou v at constant t. Third one is dou h by dou p at constant s is equal to dou g by dou p at constant t. Last one is dou z by dou t at constant v is equal to dou g by dou t at constant p. So, all the four equations can be remembered from this simple diagram. So, in total we have 16 property relations that are obtained from the concept of exact differentials. So, this is all about the thermodynamic differential equations which we have derived. Now, let us uh, try to attempt some of the important problems which we learnt in this lecture. So, basically the typical nature of the problem in this model will be more on towards the partial differential equations where we must take a complete strength of the um, uh, differential equations. Uh, the first problem that we are going to solve is that we are going to consider a equation of state that is p is equal to r t by b minus b minus a by v square. This is nothing but a van der Waals equation. Now, we will see that how this van der Waals equation is uh, always, always uh, it is not the uh, same as equation of state. There are different uh, real gases, they follow different nature of equation or state equations. So, uh, let us see that how our, uh, how we can use this uh, concept of exact differential for these situations for which is uh, which we are going to discuss uh, is that we need to find out the expression for differential exact differential of pressures. So, by exact differential of pressure we mean we, re we are required to find out d p. Okay. Then we need to find out mixed second partial derivatives which means that when you have to when you have to recall m and n and uh, second partial derivative needs to be obtained with respect to m and n. Now, let us see that what is this d p and what is this m and n. Uh, we have to make the correlation first. So, solution let me start first if I write p is a function of we can say temperature and volume and so we can write d p which is the asked in the first situation which is d p by d p by d t at constant v plus into d t plus d p by d v at constant t d v right. So, here we can say this is our m this is our n. So, m, m is d p by d t at constant v, n is d p by d v at uh, 
constant t. Now, uh, let us compare what is our the functional relations. So, comparing this equation with this, we can find out what is m. So, m is nothing but dp by dt at constant v. So, if you start this particular equation and differentiate pressure with respect to temperature at constant volume, so we can get, so the second expression will vanish, we can write it is r is equal to r by p minus b. So, we can say m is equal to r by b minus p. Similarly, we can write n as dp by dv at constant temperatures and what is this dp by dv that we can find out like this. Uh, uh, so, v comes, v is appearing in the both part of this equations. So, what we can write like this is R t into d of d v minus b into b minus b to the power minus 1 into rho of b minus b by rho v this is the first part. Second part will be minus a d by d v b to the power minus 2. Okay. Now, if you do this differentiation n will be minus r t by v minus b square plus 2 a by b q. So, we have m and n. So, we can write the first answer that is where we can say d p is equal to uh, r by v minus b into d t plus minus r t by v minus b square plus twice a by b q to the power into d v. We got the first answer. Next thing is that mixed second partial derivative. So, here we need to find out mixed partial derivative means we have to find out d m by d v at constant temperature. So, there uh, where m is this, so you have to find d m by d v at constant temperature and d n by uh, d t at constant volume. So, now we have we all know we all know that what is m, m is already here. So, d m by d v we can find find out or again difference is minus r by b minus b square. Now, we all know that what is n, so and then we can find out d n by d t at constant v will be uh, if you can different this trade this expressions this will be again come back to by r by b minus b whole square. So, what we see is that d m by d v at t is equal to d n by d t at constant volume. So, we, that means this is proved that mixed second partial derivatives are equal. Third one we need to find out uh, find the expression of change of specific volume at constant temperatures. Now, when we have such a expression z p is equal to this, we can write the another um, relation that is d p by d v at which is called a cyclic relations at constant t will be d v by d p at. So, d v by d t at constant p then d p by d v at 
so we have p v t so d v by d t at constant p then d p by d v at constant t then d t by d p at constant v will be minus 1 right so what question this is asked is we need to find out what is d p change in the specific volume d v by with respect to temperature at constant pressure that is equal to minus 1 by d p by d v at t into d t by d p at v. So, you recall here we have d p by d v at constant t already evaluated d t by d p at constant v is already evaluated. So, from this we can say d v by d t at constant p would be minus r by p minus b divided by minus r t by b minus b square plus twice a by b q. Okay. So, this is how uh, we gave the demonstration how the partial derivatives um, can be obtained from this simple uh, uh, concept of exact differential. Now, next problem which is similar where it is given that we have a thermodynamic state of water vapor which at um, we, we need to find out the thermodynamic state of water vapor and the vapor exists at a state. Uh, 240 degree centigrade and specific volume of 0.4646 kg per meter cube. Uh, we need to find out how the entropy change, what is the uh, change in the entropy with respect to specific volume at constant temperatures. For example, if I keep temperature constant and change the uh, vo specific volume what happens to entropy. So, this is very difficult to find out experimentally, but you can see the what is the uh, importance of this mathematical analysis, how we can uh, form a find the change in the entropy with respect to specific volume at constant temperatures. So, this change in the volume with respect to uh, change in the entropy with respect to specific volume at constant temperature for which we have to recall one of the Maxwell equation. And that Maxwell equation states d s by d t at constant volume is nothing but d p by d t at constant volume d s by d v sorry d s by d v at constant temperature is equal to d p by d t at constant volume. So, you see that entropy change is related to property data that is pressure and temperatures and we have this equations p we have this equations equation of state I can say and this equation of state can be solved. So, we can find the first expression we need to find that if you differentiate that d p by d t at constant v this equation can be represented as r bar by v bar minus b plus a by uh, twice v bar into v bar plus b t to the power half was there. So, it will be 3 by 2. Okay. Now, remember here, here uh, the expressions or data where a and b are constant are expressed in the form of mole, but whereas the specific volume data is given in the kg per meter cube. So, that is what this b bar needs to be changed. So, I can say that b bar would be now specific volume that is 0.4646 into 
what is the molar mass of water vapor we can say 18 kg 18 so this v bar can be found out as 8.372 meter cube per kilo mole sorry it will be meter cube per kg can see this is not me meter cube per kg kg per meter cube is the density but it will be meter cube per kg so this is the correction so that means from the specific volume we can get the molar uh, volume molar specific volume we all know a we have no we have a which is 142.6 b as 0.0211 so, all the data is given even R bar is also given in moles 8314. So, by putting this number we can write that dp by dt at constant v would be 8314 divided by 8.372 minus 0 0.0211 plus 142.6 twice v bar is 8.372 into 8.372 plus 0 0.0211. By substituting all this number, we can say dp by dt at constant v is into that will be 513 513 to the power 3 by 2 where t is equal to 240 degree centigrade so 513 kelvin so dp by dt at constant volume is 0 0.003 kg per meter cube kelvin what it says is that change in the pressure with respect to temperature at constant volume is 1.003 and this can be uh, equal to change in the specific entropy at with respect to change in the specific volume at constant temperature will be 1.003 kg per meter cube Kelvin. So, this uh, tells talks about the how um, the equation of state will be uh, um, useful uh, to find the state of the systems. This equation of state is required because these are the major data and from this major data in by solving this problem we see the, that how entropy change uh, with respect to specific volume at, um, can be addressed through Maxwell equations. With this I close the lecture for today. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.